A similar idea to, to parallel structure is the comparison. We want to make sure that we avoid faulty comparisons or incomplete comparisons. For uh, faulty comparisons or ambiguous comparisons, make sure you only compare like with like. So here's an example of a sentence that says, in the US, it is estimated that 13.8 million people will be suffering from AD by 2050. On the other hand, the prevalence of the disease in Malaysia is estimated to reach 0.54% by 2050. All right, so this is a comparison that is ambiguous. I would even say it's faulty because you're comparing number of people in the U.S. with percentage of people in Malaysia. And so the only way to know how those numbers compare is if you go and look up the population of the U.S. and look up the population of Malaysia and do the conversion yourself. They should either both be numbers of millions of people or they should both be percentages of populations. Another example is here, the way that it's not a a good comparison is to say both of our catalysts under cycling conditions revealed a similar stability compared with Wu et al. So what's wrong with saying that? The problem is they're comparing the catalysts with Wu et al. Those are people. People are, are not catalysts under cycling conditions. They're comparing their results to people. So the way to fix this sentence is to say both of our catalysts under cycling conditions revealed a similar stability compared with stability determined by Wu et al. So now we're comparing like with like. So here's an example of an incomplete comparison. Henry et al. 2011 found a rice genotype with deep root growth exhibited greater drought resistance and highest drought resistance index. So the question is, greater drought resistance than what? And highest compared to what? So we need to add that information to make this a complete comparison. And also we've got the authors as the subject of the sentence. So I would also change that in my revision. So my revision would be like this. A rice genotype with deep root growth had greater drought resistance than a genotype with shallow growth and had the highest drought resistance index of several genotypes. So we've added the information to complete the comparison. So we have discussed paragraph structure, and we have also discussed sentence structure. And as you know, paragraphs are made up of sentences. Now let's talk about combining strategies for sentence structure with strategies for paragraph structure and how those two work together. Now we already talked about parallel structure for sentences, but we also need to think about parallel structure within paragraphs, not just within sentences, but within the paragraph itself. Like there are parallel ideas in compound sentences, there are also parallel ideas in a paragraph, and these ideas are equal in logic and in importance. So when you have multiple sentences that are exploring different angles of uh, the same topic, uh, different ideas within that same topic, make sure that you structure those sentences in the same way. So they're separate sentences, but you want to structure them in the same way so that in the reader's mind, they're immediately comparable to each other. So use the same grammatical structure, the same word choice, the same word order, the same tense, the same voice and verb form, etc. And so when you use this parallel structure, it's going to make it much easier for your readers to see what you're doing and what, what you're thinking as you're writing these paragraphs. So here's an example of using key terms consistently within a paragraph. You need to use key terms consistently throughout your entire manuscript, but we're just going to look at one paragraph. Okay, so this paragraph says, we report the discovery of a 50,000 year old birch tar hafted flint tool from Northwestern Europe. It complements a small set of well dated and chemically identified adhesives from Middle Paleolithic slash Middle Stone Age contexts. Together with data from experiments and other Middle Paleolithic glues, 
It demonstrates that Neanderthals mastered complex paste production strategies and composite tool use at the northern edge of their range. Now we see here that in the first sentence they use the term adhesive, in the second sentence they use the term glue, and at the third usage they say paste. Now you can probably figure out that they're talking about the same thing, adhesive, glue, and paste, but it takes you a little bit of extra time. You have to think about it and you have to actually slow down your reading and think, wait a minute, is, is the glue and the adhesive the same thing or is it so, something different? Is it something subtly different? And it takes extra effort on your part as a reader. So what I would suggest these authors to do is choose one of these terms and use it consistently. For example, just say adhesive each time. Now it's consistent. The reader doesn't even have to think about it for a split second. It's, it's obvious that they're talking about the same thing in each of these sentences. Now let's talk about another strategy for making your paragraphs coherent. So remember, unity, coherence, and development are all part of a, of a good paragraph. They're all components or characteristics of a good paragraph. So one way to ensure that the paragraph is cohesive is to use this technique that we call the jumping word position. If you remember, we had the rule to place old, familiar, or short information at the beginning of a sentence in the topic position, and we had the rule to place new, complex, or long information at the end of a sentence in the stress position. Remembering that as you write multiple sentences to develop your ideas, use that to your advantage. So what is new information in one sentence now can become old and familiar information in the following sentence. So you can use this technique to string together sentences and develop your ideas very quickly in an efficient way within a paragraph. And it also makes the paragraph coherent because one sentence leads into the next. Let's look at an example. So this is part of a paragraph made up of three different sentences. The first one says, while iron is usually abundant in soil, its solubility is low in alkaline soils, which are often calcareous and contain high concentrations of bicarbonate. And so in the green there, we see the familiar information Everyone is familiar with iron and they're familiar with soil, but they may not be familiar with alkaline soils and their characteristics. So that is the new information, which is in blue, and it's at the end of the sentence in the stress position. Now that the high pH alkaline soils have been introduced, then we can move on to make that familiar information in the second sentence, which starts out with that concept as its subject. Alkaline pH with high bicarbonate levels can cause iron deficiency chlorosis, a situation resulting from functional iron deficiency where leaves are yellow instead of green. And so we've introduced the new concept of iron deficiency chlorosis. Now that can become a familiar topic in the next sentence, which says, however, Beyond chlorosis, the biological effects of IDC are mostly unknown, especially at the molecular level, and it is not clear that IDC resulting from alkaline stress is equivalent to iron deficiency resulting from low iron supply. So I think you can see how to use this jumping word location technique to put your paragraphs together in a cohesive way.